Hey guys, and welcome to episode 20 of how to be a 3D animator. In this episode, we're doing constraints again. So by the end of this video, if you watch the whole thing, you should be able to learn how we made each one of those clips. Now, if you don't understand what's happening in this video, then I suggest you watch my last video. And if you don't understand what was happening in that, I suggest you watch the video before that because all three were based on constraints and we're just building off of each other. So this is the third video in the series. Now I actually got an email request for this video. And so that's the main reason I actually went ahead and made a third constraint video, third constraint video. Um, and I feel like by the end of this, by the end of this video, if you watch the whole thing and all other two videos, you should be able to call yourselves experts in constraints, at least in Maya. So with that being said, uh, if you guys haven't watched the previous two episodes, make sure to watch those. Let's jump right into this week's video. Okay, ladies and gents, this is pretty much what we got. Just the character moving her finger. This was made very, very roughly, very, very fast. But let's say we want to rotate the gun, um, like you guys saw in the original clip. You want to rotate the gun around the finger. How would we do that? Well, first, so we have it positioned uh, where we want it. We're going to click the hand control. Click the main control and if you guys don't know what this is or don't know what the top right uh, don't know what the picture on the top right is then you guys should probably check out the last video I made on constraints it's literally the video behind before this so just watch that then come back to this and you should be able to understand everything um, okay so again we're selecting the hand shift selecting the main control the main control is the bigger control going to animation constraints parent constraint and now if we go ahead and take a look at this the gun is now moving with the finger or with the hand now if we try and rotate this from where it is right now uh, let me go ahead and try and rotate it it'll end up rotating on its own axis axes on its own axis Ac let's go with axis on its own axis but the thing is, we want it to rotate from the finger and not from uh, wherever the controller is, which is right here. So a way around this is by selecting the offset control, pressing W, then pressing D once, just tap it once. And then I'm going to move this to around where the finger is at. And we'll say, we'll say it's right there. We'll say, we'll say that's good. And now if I go ahead and try and rotate it this time, it'll start rotating around the finger. So we actually move the pivot point of the, ro the offset rotation. So now it rotates from the new pivot point. So now let's just go ahead and animate this rotating around the finger while the character is moving the gun around. And again, like the, this secondary animation will be on the offset control. It will be on the smaller control. The bigger control is uh, constrained to the hand. The smaller control is where, we, where we'll be doing most of our animation. So now I'm going to the last frame and changing this to negative 2000, sorry, negative 2000, then rotate Z. Make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's linear. Now let's see what we have. There we go. I mean, it's, it's something, it's something, we'll take it. Okay, so this method is actually really good for when you want the gun to be following your arm, but you have the fingers also affecting the gun or whatever objects in your hand. Um, but what if you want the gun to stop following the hand? What if you want to throw the gun up and we don't want any more influence on it? And then we want to catch the gun and have the influence back. Well, let's find out how we're going to do that. As you guys can see, my clothing has changed. I'm wearing a hat. I got a little scuffier. And the stuff in the background has changed a little bit. And the reason for that is that we're two weeks into the future. I mentioned in my last video, I couldn't actually access my Maya. And so there was an issue with my with me constraining and to try and fix that I tried uninstalling it and uninstalling didn't go so well because somehow it didn't get rid of everything and so when I tried to reinstall it it would register Maya as installed already and so I couldn't reinstall Maya so I didn't actually have access to Maya for two weeks luckily yesterday last night actually my buddy came over uh, my buddy Marco and he helped me sort it out we finally got to the bottom of it and so this morning I was like that today's the day I'm gonna get back into it try and finish this tutorial so sorry for that little interjection let's jump right back into it Alright, so this is what we have. Uh, we want the gun to be stuck to the hand. 
Then when the character throws it up, we want it to be unstuck. And then once the character grabs again, we want it to be stuck to the hand again. And here's how we're gonna do that. Um, let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and do exactly what we did in the last um, in the last section. So we have the main controller right there, frame one. Yep. I'm gonna delete the key on it. I'm selecting the hand. Shift selecting the main control. Then going to animation constraint parent. Right. So now this is what we have. All right, now let's figure out where the point is, the, the point of release. So let's see, we have the hand going up and we'll say around here, go to frame 16. Uh, I'm going to set another key, go to frame 17, set another key to keep the position of the gun, then change blend parent to zero. Set a key again, so now we have this, but once we play it, the gun's not going to come back down. It stops following the hand at frame 17 because we changed the blend parent to zero. So now we can go ahead and animate the gun. So I'm going to do that real quick. So let's see, so at frame, so at frame 33, we want the gun to be back in this position. So I'm going to set a key. We want the gun to be back in that position and frame 34, I'm going to change blend parent to one. So we have a, we have a key where the blend parent is zero, where, we, where the gun comes back into the hand. Then blame th uh, frame, frame 34, we set blend parent to one again. So it goes from one, zero, zero, one. If you guys look at the timeline, one, zero, zero, one. So now we can freely animate the gun in this range. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want the gun by frame 24 to be up here. So I animated the gun uh, really quickly and now we have something like this. So we have it animated so it goes up and then like we set it, she catches it back gets her grip and it stays with the hand again and essentially just to recap all we did was just set keys on the blend parent took it off to animate it and then set it back to one to get reattached to the hand uh, so now for the third and last one we're gonna have the gun change hands so it'll be stuck to one hand then we're gonna have the gun change hands so let's jump right into that all right now we got something like this we're gonna have the gun go from one arm to the other. We have two poses set right now, which is not really important. I just wanted to show you guys what the gun will be doing. So first things first, I'm gonna select the main control on the gun and I'm gonna get rid of all the keys. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the arm control, shift select the gun's main control, go to animation parent and once again make sure maintain offset is on so parent constraint now we have something like this it stays with the left arm but what we wanted to do is move from the left arm to the right arm so let's see how we can do that again I'm gonna select the main control this time I'm gonna set a key on it and once we set a key this blend parent option pops up again set another key we're going to figure out exactly when the gun hits the other arm. So in this case, it'll be frame frame 13 is when the, the gun switches hands and it goes into the right arm or the right hand. So I'm going to set a key here and actually move the gun and try and place it in the other hand. So I got it in the position I want more or less. And I'm going to select the right hand this time. Shift select the main control again and parent constraint. And now if you guys notice, another one popped up here. So before we had control left hand IK, now we also have control right hand IK in the attribute editor. So now if we just select the main control, change the parent blend to one. So what this does, it, it activates the constraints. So now both constraints are fighting for control here. 
So it's it's torn between the two. It's giving 50% control to the right hand, 50% control to the left hand. And so let's see what we can do about that here. So what we want to do is figure out at what point the gun leaves the left hand. And so in our case, it will be frame 11 and we'll go to frame 10, so frame beforehand. We're going to relinquish the control of the right arm here. So we're going to set a key on the right arm, change this to zero and right click, set a key, key selected. We're going to key selected the left arm as well. So the left arm has one control, which is 100% control and the right arm has zero, 0% 0 control. So all the control for the gun is coming from the left hand. So we have these two set and around here, I'm going to save the position of the gun by setting a key. I'm going to set a key on the main control, go to frame 12, bring blend parent to zero, and now we can freely animate in between. So just going to reposition this and we're going to animate that closer to the hand. And if you guys notice, so what happened here is the gun goes right back to the left hand. And that's because the left hand still has all the control. So we just got to relinquish that and give the control to the right hand while the gun is bouncing between the two. So we're going to go to frame 12, for example, where blend parent is at zero and set a key on both of these. Now go to frame 13 and change the control of the left hand to zero and change the control of the right hand to one. So now the right hand has all the control. I'm going to go ahead and set two keys again. Um, so once I do this once, I'll try and uh, sum it down for you guys as well. If you didn't understand uh, what we did so far. Uh, so let's see what we have now. So again, we changed the control to the right hand and now there we go. The gun stays in the right hand. So now we have the gun switching hands. Just quickly to summarize, the parent attribute just turns on whether or not you'd like the gun to be parented or not. So it's just an option to say parent on or parent off. The values underneath dictate how much weight each constraint has. So in this case, if the left hand has one and the right hand has zero, it means the left hand controls 100% of the movement of the constraint object and the right hand constrains zero because it's at zero. Now to change hands, what we did was we inverted the numbers, giving the right hand full control and the left hand no control, then set keys again. I hope that cleared it up a little bit. So this one was <laughs> a lot more confusing, especially for those of you that aren't familiar with constraints. So if you don't get it and if you have any more questions, just leave a comment down below. I will try my best to explain it in a consumable way, in a more understanding way. And if you guys have any future suggestions for future tutorials or something you're confused about in general, again, just leave a comment down below. If you guys do enjoy these kind of videos, well, I make them every week for free. I do have a Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting the channel that way, as a Patreon supporter, you also get a PDF of an animation handbook where there is just, it's just like knowledge I've acquired over the years. And some of the tutorials we'll be making, I sort of just like cramp it down into like written information so you can have it on like a little PDF. So every Patreon has access to that. So if you guys like to support the channel that way, there's something in it for you as well. With that being said, if you like the video, smash that like button. If you like to listen to me ramble on about animation every week, again, we make weekly videos. So hit that subscribe button, stay notified of future videos. And with that out of the way, happy animating, and I will see you guys in the next video.